So hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Just to let you know, this is like my second introduction to this video. So you're gonna see another intro as we start into this first video about autonomous flight and using Litchi's Mission Hub. I wanna let you know, I don't have things pre-scripted. I never usually do things pre-scripted. Instead, I usually do stuff off the cuff and kind of feel my way through what we're working with. Now, in the case of some programs like using Litchi, on the iPhone and the iPad, that's like second nature to me. I've been using that for such a long time. Using the Mission Hub for me is kind of a rare occasion, but I am realizing that I can use it more in my workflows and in what I'm doing. So I'm getting that into my regular repertoire of what I do when I go out to a location. So in the meantime, I just want you to understand that all of these videos, like I said, they're not pre-scripted. I'm not reading off a teleprompter. We're talking this stuff through because when you're working on your setups, you're going to be working this through for yourself the first couple of times until you really get it down. So in the case of this one, just giving you a heads up, I did some things out of order and I note them in the, in the video as well, what was out of order and what would work better. So learning by doing, and that's been a big thing in my career in telecommunications and in photography and web development and of course the drone work here. So people don't know everything. Nobody knows everything about all of these products and also about autonomous flight in general. So I'm sharing all this with you and helping you to move along in the areas that I struggled getting information uh, about. So today there's tons of information out there, but there's still not a lot of information about the application, um, what we're using these things for. There's a lot of stuff out there about drone specs, drone batteries, you know, all this great stuff and the cool gear. But when it comes to, all right, how do I use this stuff? And what am I using it for? We seem to be lacking a lot. By the way, this might be a green screen behind me, or this might have something replacing the green screen. We're gonna see how this hat comes through, and most likely the hat's not gonna work out so you're seeing this on green screen. So now that I've prepped you, we'll do a little intro, and then you'll get the original intro to this video and me walking my way through the Litchi Mission Hub. The other Litchi videos that will be upcoming will be on the iPad and the iPhone, and I'm extremely comfortable with those, and I will zing right through those. Hopefully I won't zing through them too fast because I want to make sure that you catch everything. I really do hope that you enjoy this series. And remember, this is really the first step into the series, so we'll get a little more comfortable with it. And I'll try to be a little more casual. I feel like I'm uptight sometimes on camera. All right, everyone, I really do appreciate you hanging out. By the way, we're really close to 2,000 subscribers. Thank you, everybody who's been following along. It's awesome. Now, on to the scheduled video. So today we're starting in talking about autonomous drone flight. I already did an intro video and you probably saw that recently. Today we're going to start into actually taking a look at some of these applications. So the first application that I want to look at is one of my favorite applications out there and that would be Litchi. And Litchi is designed for DJI drones and you can use it on both Android and iOS systems. So we're talking Android tablets, Android phones, iPhones, iPads. Um, it's all covered with Litchi, which is great because a lot of applications out there are for one uh, operating system or another operating system. So there are some that are specifically for Android only, and there are some that are for iOS only. So this is a great one because you're not wrapped into one technological ecosystem or another. Um, both, both of the major portable systems are available to you. So Litchi is an app that covers a lot. Number one, you can do free flight with Litchi, just like uh, DJI's um, DJI Go 4 app or the DJI Go app. You can actually do regular flight with the FPV first person view. And then Litchi offers a lot of other tools. And I think some of the tools were developed before DJI even had their tools out. Um, the equivalent types of tools. So Litchi has been around for a good while and it's definitely a software package that's worth looking into if you're a DJI drone pilot and you want to start doing autonomous flight. So we're not going to go through all of the features and settings of Litchi today. We're going to space this out over a couple of videos. 
so that uh, you can absorb each part of it. For today, we're not even going to be playing around with any smart devices. So no iPhones, no Androids, no tablets. We're actually going to be looking at Litchi on the website because one of the things that I really like about Litchi that a lot of the other autonomous drone applications out there don't do, Litchi has this website with a mission hub and you can actually set up some of your waypoint missions on the website and then get those missions put over onto your smart device, whether it's an iPhone or an Android. So you can synchronize the flights that you're gonna be doing between multiple devices very easily. It's the easiest one out there. Other applications on the market for DJI and other drones do offer some kind of synchronization, but it's very manual, it's very clunky. Uh, it doesn't work well. Litchi works perfectly with this. So for our first talk on autonomous drone flight, we're going to move over to the um, to the screen here, and I'm going to be actually moving the microphone just a bit as well so that it's not in my way while I'm doing this work here. So number one, I just brought you to the Litchi website, and we're on litchi.com because I wanted you to see the front page here. Get it on Google Play and download it at the App Store. So it's very reasonably priced. I believe it's still like in the $25 range. And I have to say that if you're going to be doing drone piloting and you want to do some autonomous flight and pre-programmed flight, that Litchi is one great way to go. If you're looking to do 3D models, there's a couple things you can do with Litchi. Unfortunately, there are other programs that do a better job. So it can't do everything. And, you know, who would expect it? So anyways, I'm uh, going to move over from the Litchi page and we're actually going to go over to the Litchi Hub. So going to the Mission Hub right now and this is what the Litchi Hub looks like. So before I started using Litchi's Hub, I actually had downloaded the Litchi app and I signed up with Litchi. Once I've signed up with Litchi, I do have access to their Mission Hub. Now. What we showed off in the previous video is showing you that I pre-planned a flight path that I'm going to be flying regularly to show progression of a construction location over time. And you're going to see that developing on this channel um, as I progress with it. But so part one here, I thought let's actually see what the Litchi Mission Hub does for us and how it ties together with our smart devices. So number one, I have made some missions with the Litchi Hub. Now, Litchi's Hub lets you do the waypoint missions. I haven't found a way to actually do my orbits or any of the other mission types. So right now, I use Litchi Hub specifically for waypoint missions. And I'm going to go up to missions and open. And so as you can see, I've got a lot of missions that I've set up over time. And let's just take a look at what I'm going to do that one so this was for my clients at pointer rocks rv campground in prescott arizona and this was just doing an interesting flight around the park to give people kind of a nice insight into what the park looks like from up above and not only is this on the mission hub this particular mission is on both my iphones and my ipad they were automatically synchronized because i'm signed in to litchi with my apps so this is great because I can actually put this together in the Mission Hub if I'd like to, and then it will be available on my devices for my flight later. And I could take you through all of the missions, but I'm not going to do that to you and torture you here. Uh, we are going to look at the Granville Improved Progression because this is going to be part of the series that I'm doing on autonomous flight. We are going to have different views and different angles. Um, we're going to be using Litchi and Ground Station Pro to achieve our final product that we'll be putting out in a couple of weeks as we go along with this series. So there we go. I actually pre-programmed this particular flight on my iPad and tweaked it on my iPad. But what we're going to do now, I'm going to go to missions and I'm going to say I want a new mission because we can create missions right here on the hub and those missions will be saved to our smart devices. So I told it that I wanted to do a new mission and now I'm going to pick this right here as my first point. Now, what's really awesome on the Mission Hub is that we've got the latitude and longitude here. Um, so 
if you were working on a location that you'd like to pre-program flight for, and let's say that the Google Maps don't have anything there because construction has just started, and it takes a while for those satellite images to get updated on Google Maps. So maybe you don't have a great point of reference, but what you can do is if, uh, if you know the location that you're going to be working, get the GPS location from your clients, and um, you can very easily plug in lat and long, and then you're off and running, so you can start building on the mission hub, and then you'll be ready when you get out in the field. So here we have our lat and long, we have our altitude um, above ground level. So let's see, elevation data is required to use this feature, but could not be found. Import a digital elevation model. Okay, we're going to close that and we won't have it make an adjustment. We're going to know that we're correct on our elevation. And I already do because I've done this mission before. But so for point number one, I can actually, I want this to be, I can type into here 150 feet. And we're going to go with the cruising speed for the overall mission. And if we wanted curved, um, curved motion, if we wanted smooth curved motion, we can actually turn on the curve size. And right now, we don't have the curve size at all because I dropped number one. So the other thing that I want to, um, to let you know is that we're learning together here. So I don't always use the hub. I'm going to arrow back. And okay, nothing. So I can't arrow back and forth. So this is just my first waypoint for the moment. Oh yeah, I can go down to settings. So I've created that waypoint, but let's go down to settings. So see, we're learning together. So number one, I'm going to do this imperial. So I want to do this in feet. And then our heading mode, we can do automatic. We can do a custom and I'm going to go with the custom because I want to use points of interest to focus on and the custom is going to be a way to go. At the end of the mission, I want it to return to home. And we want to do curved turns. And yeah, let's do a cruising speed of 18 miles per hour worked nicely for me, or 18.3 is fine. And max speed, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set that to 18.3. There we go. Default curve size, I'm going to make those curves really big. And the gimbal pitch is going to be based on the point of interest that I put onto the map. And then I can show this, uh, I can show discover mission so other people can actually go into the Litchi Hub and look at um, my missions and maybe even fly my missions. And I'm okay with that. So I'm going to hit close on that. So there we go. We've got our first waypoint. We set up our settings. And right now I don't have a uh, actual point of interest. So how do I put a point of interest in here? That's going to be a good question. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to lay this out a little bit more. And so right here is going to be waypoint number two. And I'm going to have it cross the road right here. And I'm actually putting this a little ways away from the sidewalk because I don't want to be flying over people. And then we're going to go over to here. I'm going to move it up and I'm going to have it come back. So I'm just having it do this very, very simple flight path. And then we're going to bring it back right next to one. So there we go. Now we've created all these points and we can go and edit each of these points. We can also add actions over here. So we are looking at, let's see, we've got my waypoint. Uh, eight settings and down here at the bottom I can arrow back on through so that we can set up each one. So the only thing that we seem to be missing right now is how to put a point of interest out here. So let me go up to six. I'm going to click on six. I'd like to put a point of interest right out here and there is a plus button. So what's that plus button do? Oh, that is actually what lets us do actions at the waypoints. I'm going to take that away because I don't want to do that right now. And what I would like to do is insert, whoops, that is definitely wrong. I'm deleting that. So see, we're making some mistakes here and that's okay. All right, so when in doubt, right click. I don't use this very often. I don't use the Mission Hub often for planning flights. I actually use my iPad. But if you right click out here, oh, look at that. I've made a point of interest. 
and I'm actually going to make that point of interest at 20 feet and that way the gimbal will have a little bit of down tilt. So let's go ahead and close that and now let's scroll back down here. Click on our first waypoint. Oh, I clicked on number eight. Click on our first waypoint and we can see that we have an altitude of 150 feet. We're going with the cruising speed. Um, we're letting the default curves take effect from the settings and the heading is actually pointing at that point of interest. So I'm focused on the point of interest and I'm going to have a negative three degree down tilt for that particular point of interest. Now I can click on number two or I can arrow through right here. So I'm choosing to arrow through, taking a look once again, altitude 150 feet and we've got the focus point of interest. And now because we're getting closer to it, it's tilting the gimbal down just a little more to negative four. Let's go over to the next one and let's take a look at that. Negative five, 150 feet. So I can go through each and every one of these and sure enough, they're all working on that point of interest. So we can make multiple points of interest as well. And we'll do that and show multiple points of interest when we actually do a demo on the application itself. And so I'm going to arrow back to number eight. And this is looking all good for us now. So very similar to the mission that I showed in the previous video, except the fact that I've actually pre-programmed this one on the Mission Hub instead of on one of my devices with the app. So there you go. Now I can save this mission. So let's save this mission and I'm going to give it a name that'll make it pop up to the top of my iPad list. So this is going to be number one uh, Litchi Hub Demo. And if we go and take a look, which I'll pop up on screen in just a few moments, if we take a look on my iPad, we'll see that this Litchi Hub demo is going to be on the iPad. So I'm going to save that and let's look in here and let's take a look. There we go. Number one Litchi Hub demo is on here. And so wrapping this video up, we'll have you take a look really quick at the fact that it is now also on my iPad synchronized there.